Holy cow, this thing is putting out heat. I haven't been on this side over here. Wow. All right, welcome everyone. My name is Charlie Solis. This is my Tesla turbine, combustion system, uh, boiler, combustion, mixing, steam tube that will be going into my turbine. It's quite a little bit of a array. If you're not sure what's going on here, I've got a bunch of other videos up on my channel. Take a look at them. I do. There's about a video for every little addition that we kind of added onto here. If you're not familiar specifically with what we're working on, this is a replication of Tesla's improved steam plus combustion patent. It's GB186083, patented in 1921. It was after 10 years of R&D on the first patent. And if you haven't seen the T Dr. Tesla talks of gas turbines, I do a audiobook reading of it. He kind of talks in 1911 after he patented the first turbine patent, talks a little bit about where he wanted to go with this and how he wanted to develop the combustion system to be better and improved as he then does after 10 years of working on these he then actually patents about four or five different patents in the 20s the 1920s and 1921 it's gb186082 gb186083 gb186084 the two is the improved runner design like the actual disc stack and it, i've already been replicating that I'm, i basically have a complete version replication of that patent the GB186083 is the burner combustion system where this, the combustion and the steam are mixed together and then there's a recoup boiler off the exhaust which is what these kegs at the bottom will end up being. I'm not sure if you can see them in my camera but if you see in the other videos you'll see the kegs that are at the bottom. Then GB186084 is just a steam superheater. It's basically just a burner that goes into a coil and then that coil is put into a casing or a shell and tube and then the steam is passed around that coil so all the heat goes to superheat the steam and then those two are mixed into the turbine with a nozzle that coaxially mixes and goes into the turbine so that the steam that goes through always pulls a vacuum on the inner combustion exhaust part of the jet onto the discs so that you always have the flame going through and it's constantly being pulled drawn through the coil that's going through. I'll probably put up pictures of each of those patents. Then there's a couple other improvements that Tesla did and he also talks about, it's a little not really not a, the turbine patent, but in the aerial apparatus, the corrected one that he finalized. There's a couple sections about the turbine in there and how he adapts them and how they should be used for higher power output situations. I highly suggest reading those too. Then there's the balancing apparatus that he put together with all this too. And I think there might, there might be one more. Oh yeah, right after the turbine patent, before these ones, the, the other thing he patented was the uh, Tesla fountain, which if you're not familiar with that, I highly suggest looking it up. I have a couple videos about the Tesla fountain steam condenser idea of mine, where we use the Tesla fountain as a water to air heat exchanger for the condenser of the steam turbine. So let's continue here now. I'm gonna be doing some liquid fuel tests here. This is the first liquid fuel test we've done. This is pretty loud. There's a lot of detonations that are going on right now. So mind your volume. This is an aluminum gas tank. Sight glass for the fuel height. It's about right here right now. This is air, this is the fuel. Right now I have it set up to do propane and liquid fuels at the same time, but it is currently set to only do liquid fuels right now because I want to hone it in to be able to get the liquid and the gas. Gaseous fuels is super easy. So on that note, if you want to get one of these from us, if you're just planning on running us on wood gas, this is good to go. We, we are all set with gaseous type, type fuels. I've got propane compressed. You don't need to have it compressed because you can draw it in with a venturi with the air, but this is, it works beautifully for, for gaseous fuels. So again, I'm just trying to hone this in for the actual uh, liquid fuels here. It's a little hard to throttle it. The little misting nozzle I had was a little too wide. It worked great for the, the propane, but I, needed, I actually made it smaller. The other thing was it was kind of hard to throttle it. Like it was, it would just immediately go too much liquid fuel was being dumped in. Cause it's not a big burner inside of here. I don't have one to show you, a secondary one, but it's it, the, the, the flame tube is about, like there's a one inch tube about this long, and then it goes to a two inch, and then it goes to the accelerator nozzle. But yeah, I'm just gonna give this a go here. Um, for posterity's sake, the combustion, the air comes in, fuel comes in, they mix, go through the flame tube, the flame tube's inside of this sight glass. You can see a sight glass inside of the sight glass that you can see directly into the flame tube. And you don't want the flame to be down the length of the accelerator nozzle. 
We want it to be contained within over here. If it's over here, it's probably they're not getting enough air or not mixing enough. We want it completely burnt so that everything going out here isn't still giving off light and it's still super hot. And then right after this, it jets down the center of a 1.5 inch tube and the steam made from the water jacket around the combustion tube goes, rises up the header and goes in and then mixes into the steam mixing tube. The steam mixing tube is separated from these and this, but the, this water in both of these is the same. So this goes into that steam tube. Inside this header up here, there's a heat exchanger. This is kind of looks complicated, but there's just some simple additions that were added. Basically, this is the single pass flame tube boiler and all the steam that gets made rises up through the header. In this header, continues to go through this manifold. Inside these tubes are heat exchangers where the compressed air that comes in goes through to preheat the compressed air. And then the bottom rail, the fuel goes through to be preheated before going into the combustion chamber. Where else do we go here? So a lot of the late heat of vaporization that goes into this will end up coming and condensing down onto the heat exchanger in here. So we don't actually end up wasting a bunch of the late heat of vaporization to just raise steam. We end up actually preheating this and any steam that's still left over after that then gets mixed to go in. But all of the heat in the combustion chamber basically has to go through the water before it can get out and it would have to make steam. And once this is done, we'll have all of this insulated properly but I'm not doing that now and I'm still taking parts on and off all the time. So yeah, I basically have it so that the condensate that condenses onto each of these heat exchangers then falls back down and goes into the downcomer and then goes back into the bottom of the boilers and rises up. These two are connected down here. Oh, new cool feature of this setup right now. I was before pressurizing the fuel tank with propane. It worked pretty well, but I wasn't getting enough pressure out of this. With the regulator I have, it only goes up to 20 PSI, and then the couple check valves it had to go through, I couldn't get much more over 10 on here. I didn't want to use air, even though Tesla talks about using compressed air to pressurize the fuel tank, it's, I, I'm still not, I don't feel comfortable doing that. You're making a bomb. If I don't have the right flashback arresters on here, pressure pulse back could detonate a little of the air that's in there. But, so what I did, was in the spirit of all these kegs, I just went with a CO2 pressurized tank. And so this fuel tank is being pressurized with CO2. If you know a reason I shouldn't do that, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, so I've got this extra kegerator kit that I just been had sitting around and I had the tank that I wasn't using and I went and exchanged it for a new tank that was full. I already got the regulator set up. Coming into the fuel tank with CO2 pressurized. Eventually, this is just a starter tank. I don't want to have to do a big tank before I just want to test something, but I'm going to use a keg over there and use a 15 gallon keg basically, 13 to 15, I don't know what the full number is on that, it's 50 liters. But yeah, so that'll basically be pressurized with the same CO2 just like you would a normal keg and that fuel will just get pushed into the fuel system just like a keg would press out the beer into a cup. <laughs> same pressure, same, it's basically what I'm using here. And as we raise the pressures of the boiler, we'll end up having to bring these pressures up too, just so that they keep moving through. But as there's back pressure produced from the turbine, you'll end up just putting more pressure here so that the pressure drop across the burner is about the same, but it's just going into a higher pressure that then goes into the turbine. But yeah, you know what, here we go. I'm gonna just give her a go. Eventually the compressor is gonna turn on. Again, I'm gonna warn you, volume. Yeah, all right. That was just fuel that was in there. There we go. There we go. That's too much. Way too much. Almost. Too much fuel. Lots of fuel. Way too much fuel. Perfect, but it's gonna work. Turn down the fuel a little bit. 
Here's the compressor. Can you see? Oh yeah, maybe you can see the light in there. I hope you can see that down here. I'm gonna turn you for a second. Make sure you can still see everything in me. Yeah. Nope. Oh, I caught it. more air to get this liquid fuel burning. We're doing better. Oh, lost it. to go on liquid fuels here. It's running. No propane tank anymore. Was there nothing? <laughs> we are still running here. Using a lot more air for this gasoline though. My CO detector is about to go off too. Yes, my CO detector's going down. It's up to 200 something. I don't know what it means, but it was at 200. And usually it sets off at 220 or 210. But it's going down. It's now 190 something. It's dropping, and I have some good flow air through here. So if it's dropping, I mean, this is not putting more back out. Alright, that's cool. I can see like a dim flame, too much air, a nice white flame, perfect air. And then it starts to get yellow and travel down the barrel. This is cool. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's starting to really boil good here. Liquid fuel! <laughs> At least you've got a... Um, Gasoline, which is pretty easy to burn though, of all the fuels, is probably the easiest one to do. But we're going to start with gasoline. I've got a ton of different waste oil to use. I wouldn't even try and get some bacon grease in here. We're going to burn anything we can in this. <laughs> anything we can. Yeah, we're at 179. I mean, the CO is going down. It means we're getting a good burn on this. Yeah, buddy. Thank you, Mr. Tesla. Yeah, buddy, look at her bubble. All right, everyone, you guys have a great day. I'll be back here with more tests. Wow, I'm so happy about this. This is good stuff. Get a little better look. Oh, wow, we're getting on 20 minutes here. I didn't realize how much. Holy cow, this thing is putting out heat. I haven't been on this side over here. Wow. Woo, buddy! Oh, that's great. Love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you uh, to our Lord and Savior, Nikola Tesla. Sweet eight pound, nine ounce, little infant, baby Tesla. Not even old enough to have a scientific idea yet. But wholesome and omnipotent. Oh, she's beautiful. I'm so excited about this. Look at that thing go. Woo, buddy. That's probably the most I've seen so far. Wow. I may need to deal with that. 